So we broke up after, after breakfast and what we had to do is we had to check out of our rooms. This guy that was in front of me, you know, who was checking out had a very stylishly dressed in a very nice fitted suit and he had this blazingly red tie that was just, just you know, it just really stood out. He was, he was you know, making certainly a point. And I go up and I start checking out and then all of a sudden we hear explosion, sound like gunfire something out in front of the out in front of the hotel all of a sudden uh, the guy with the tie comes back into the lobby of the hotel absolutely covered with blood out on the street and everybody is just standing there and they're all looking up and what they're looking at is the um, the impact of the first plane upon the upon the towers. Then all of a sudden, um, the second plane hit the second tower. As you know, as a plane entered the building, it blew out everything, you know, through through the other side of the building. We're looking up, and that whole plume way up in the air is starting to come down on us. A uh, New York City police officer watching what's going on and screaming, get out of here, get out of here, the building's going to collapse. You couldn't use a cell phone. Um, was getting no signal on the cell phone. And, um, and the reason was that the cell phone towers were on the top of the World Trade Center, so there was no cell phone service anywhere around. But this lady came up to us and said, can I use your cell phone? My husband's in the towers. It was a beautiful, sunny Tuesday morning on September 11, 2001, when the attack on America occurred. I was teaching at Olean High School and had a free period, so I randomly turned on my television set just in time to see the second plane hit the South Tower of the World Trade Center. I was filled with dread at the thought of the bell ringings, what was happening, while trying to remain calm, collected, and professional. The world was undeniably and irrevocably changed over the course of just a few hours when four coordinated terrorist attacks were carried out. The attack on 9-11 was a military exercise that occurred against a civilian population. 2,977 people from 93 nations were killed that day. And yet there's no simple explanation as to why this even happened. On Christmas Eve, 1979, the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan. This invasion started a nine-year-long Afghan civil war. Little did the Soviets, Afghans, or the rest of the world know for that matter, what would come from this invasion. In the late 70s, Russia invaded Afghanistan. They had a puppet government in Afghanistan as they did in all their satellites, but there was fundamental unrest coming from the Islamic world. Russia invaded Afghanistan and ended up having a surge of people come to fight it. The Taliban. They're fighting 
against the Russians as well. And we're providing them equipment. So as a result, Russia leaves, the United States pulls out, and there's a vacuum. One of the uh, uh, instrumental founders of Al-Qaeda was Osama bin Laden. Osama bin Laden was born in Saudi Arabia in 1957. He had a privileged upbringing, was well-educated, and was a member of the Islamist Muslim Brotherhood. Bin Laden became radicalized while in college, believing that all Muslims should rise in jihad or holy war to create a united Islamic state, and eventually created Al-Qaeda in 1988, focusing on acts of terrorism to spread his message. For the most part, veterans, they return home, they return to their families, they return to their lives. In Bin Laden's case, he built his organization out of a war that was victorious on the Russians were pushed out and the Americans left and left the country in chaos. And out of chaos is where the real problems occur. After the Civil War, Nathan Bedford Forrest formed this organization that tried to roll back everything that the Civil War was fought for. In the uh, 1920s, after the uh, First World War, it was in total chaos. That's how a little runt of a man, but a great orator, was able to come up and bring together all that hatred and anger. His anger towards the United States continued to grow with every military action it's made against Islamic nations. He wasn't happy with the U.S.'s uh, involvement in, in the Gulf War against Saddam Hussein and the people of Iraq. Bush the first in, in uh, the Gulf War, Operation uh, Desert Shield and then Desert Storm, told King Fahd that the United States military would leave Saudi Arabia once the threat was neutralized. He went back on his word there. He had a problem with Israel. The creation and continuation of Israel is one of the greatest crimes, and you are the leaders of the criminals. Each and every person whose hands have become polluted in the construction toward this crime must pay its price and pay for it heavily. Osama bin Laden, Letter to the American People, November 2002. This comes straight from face-to-face -face and Al-Qaeda with me. Al-Qaeda's goal is to go ahead and reunite all lands that were once under Islamic control into one state, Caliphate. This anger proved deadly as he increased Al-Qaeda's terrorist attacks around the world. We had the uh, World Trade Center bombing, not, not the one that brought the towers down, but, but the one down in the subway. The bombing of the embassy in Kenya, in, in uh, Tanzania. Tanzania, that was in 97, and then you know the USS Cole bombing in 2000. Somalia, that was also another, uh, I, we believe Al-Qaeda was involved or behind supporting the Somalis. So he had a, he had a long rap sheet um, as far as the United States is concerned and, and he was on the radar. His next attack would be his largest. For this one, he was coming back to U.S. soil with a plan that would be taken to another level. There were a total of 19 hijackers. All but, I think, four were Saudis. So the hijackers came in in different groups. Uh, and lot, most of them were coming here either as, as visitors or as, as students. So there were 
two types of hijackers. There was the so-called muscle hijackers. These were the guys that were going to subdue the passengers and the pilot and the flight crew. And then there were the pilots. So you had pilots that were going to flight schools. But a lot of them didn't speak English very well. They were struggling in the flight school. So there was a lot of suspicion towards some of these guys. I mean, eventually they made their way onto the plane with Virginia driver's licenses or IDs and hijacked the plane. First, American Airlines Flight 11 left Boston's Logan International Airport at 7.55 a.m. with 92 passengers on board. At 8.46 a.m., Flight 11 crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center in New York City, killing all passengers on board instantly, as well as hundreds of others working in the building. United Airlines Flight 175 left Logan International Airport in Boston at 8.15, headed to Los Angeles with 65 passengers on board. Flight 175 crashed into the South Tower of the World Trade Center at 9.03 a.m., killing all passengers and an unknown number of people inside the building instantly. The third plane, American Airlines Flight 77, departed from Dulles International Airport near Washington, D.C., bound for Los Angeles at 8.20 a.m. The final plane was United Airlines Flight 93 that departed from Newark International Airport. Hi baby, I'm, baby, you have to listen to me carefully. I'm on a plane that's been hijacked. I'm on the plane, I'm calling from the plane. I want to tell you I love you. Please tell my children that I love them very much. I hope to be able to see your face again, baby. I love you. Bye. Flight 93, and that's where America's response to terrorism and the war of terrorism really started. It started on Flight 93 because those passengers ended up fighting for their nation, fighting to prevent themselves from being used as a bomb. The September 11, 2001 attack on America changed the world forever. It redefined international security threats, resulted in the Patriot Act and the Department of Homeland Security, caused wars in both Iraq and Afghanistan, and led to the global war on terror that lasted for the next 20 years. However, the response of the United States to the events of September 11th sparked strong anti-American sentiment in many countries around the world and may have actually increased the overall global threat of terrorism. You know, I think we all went through our lives thinking that wars happened in other countries, that um, even when you know, America you know, went around the world to protect democracy, but at the end of the day, um, the bloodshed didn't occur on, on the homeland. And the, the world's only superpower, and to feel this vulnerability from a small group of, of people uh, made us realize that we had to change, and, and, ch and change occurred. Bin Laden did not expect us to have that attitude as a nation. We're coming in hell rides with us. He thought he was going to get away with it and stick his finger into the eye of the American people. But, in a big way, he got what he was looking for. He, he was looking for world disorder. He got world disorder. 